How's it going YouTube? It's your boy Optima back with a brand new video and today I wanted to cover things that we learned from yesterday's Magic Misadventure seasonal tournament open rounds. The open rounds are always an awesome showcase when you just have this many top level competitors all competing against each other for for the chance to make it into that prestigious top 32 it makes for a great time and i think that was even emphasized further in this particular seasonal tournament considering how open it was so really pinpointing what exact lineup to bring and also piloting it well meant a lot more in this tournament than in others where just being good at a couple of certain decks that were meta beaters was a little bit more important in some of those other metas so i thought this one made for an amazing showcase i was not only able to watch some good acquaintances and friends within the community streamed runs of their tournament run i was also able to go back and watch the official stream um from giant slayer lor since they have the vod on their channel so i've been able to absorb a decent bit of how exactly everything sh uh, shook down and it can be hard getting a big picture sense of exactly how the seasonal tournament went unless you're actually sitting down and watching all this so thankfully i was able to do that so now i can bring that information back to you guys which i hope you enjoy seasonal tournament content has generally performed better on my channel so i'm hoping that's still the case and if you do end up enjoying this video make sure to smash the like button it really does help me out as a content creator as that algorithm will treat me a lot nicer with some likes from you guys and secondly definitely leave a comment i love hearing from you guys on your thoughts on the seasonal tournament whether you're able to watch or not would love to hear what you guys just thought about this video and the information i bring to you and lastly subscribe to the channel if you're new we kind of do our own thing over here and have fun doing it so we'd love to have you for along for the ride but yeah, this Magic Misadventure Seasonal Tournament, what an amazing showcase. We had a pretty open meta, so that just makes for a better viewing experience when it comes to exactly what these lineups um, are and how exactly players go about teching them and piloting them. And yeah, it was just a great, great time, in my opinion, watching just top-level Legends of Runeterra content. And I absolutely believe that if you guys missed those open rounds, make sure to go back. Uh, make sure to try to make time to watch the top 32, as these players worked really hard to make it this far. And they just, the game's in a healthy state, so they deserve it. But yeah, let's go over things that we learned from those open rounds. So over here, we're actually on LORstats.com, and this is going to be a, um, well, here we have a seasonal report from Valentino Vassiler, and this is going to be a statistician, a data analysis um, person within the community of Legends of Runeterra, and I just really wanted to give them a huge shout out for not only providing this content that I'm going to be uh, using and, and uh, using as discussion points throughout the video, but also uh, just community members that are this valuable who just pump out free awesome content and really um, commit their time to better the community um, they just in my opinion get overlooked very often until they say hey I'm leaving the community and then everyone wants to uh, give them them their flowers then and I just think we need to give more people their flowers while they're a part of the community before they say they're leaving or anything happens so definitely make sure to check out um, Valentino Vassler, awesome uh, data analysis for competitive leg Legends of Runeterra content. And uh, yeah, just pumping out stuff for free on Twitter. Absolutely a must follow for anyone who wants more uh, to get more solid information on the competitive Legends of Runeterra meta. And he's already pumped out a seasonal report. It literally just finished yesterday. Like, guy is goaded. Um, nevertheless, though, um, he this is going to be over all the seasonal. So obviously not just NA, not just CU, not just SEA. This is going to be everything. So, um... So yeah, you can see right there, players, um, games played, um, just some good stuff to see. Actually crazy that Europe had more players than America. Um, but yeah, overall, just really cool stuff to see. So let's scroll on down to the decks um, and just kind of see where everything ranked as far as how much these decks were brought. So we can see right away that Ari Ken and Shurima, I mean Shadow Isles was the most brought deck to no one's surprise. Senna Vigar coming in second there. Um, Pantheon Tarek, Miss Fortune Quinn, um, Ari Kinnon, Sharima, Fizz Lulu, Lee Sin Zoe, Elise, Pantheon Shivana, um, Lurk. So nothing super crazy here as far as play rates, but I would say the one the one first point that really pops out was that Lee Sin Zoe was extremely popular as far as the choice. Not for the only like uh, coming in at seven isn't crazy, but it seemed like I was just watching a ton of games where this deck was involved in the game and. 
even more so it seemed to really really be a popular choice within the americas region so lots of lee sin which means that the sin of Igar, darkness was just such a solid choice to kind of really just target and take down that that lee sin not a deck lee sin appreciate seeing it all so those darkness players uh probably had a good time in the americas considering how much uh Lee Sin Zoe was brought to this seasonal tournament in the Americas. Um, but yeah, we get play rates here, we get win rates, we get ban rates, just so many awesome uh, statistics that we get here. So once again, huge shout out to Valentino. Um, but uh, yeah, we can quickly already just see some of the win rates. So obviously, like uh, Spiders actually kind of underperformed under 50%. Pantheon Shivana did worse than Pantheon Tariq um, overall, as, uh, yeah, Pantheon Tariq seemed to be a decently better option for players, and then uh, Fill the Rush didn't do well, and absolutely, the deck people were hating on for a while, the Iceborne Legacy Poros deck did really, really poor, so um, really interesting that this deck kind of fell off in a tournament this hard, but you just, um, it's it's a deck that players have said there's not a lot of agency for, and it had its flaws and really showed up, uh, those really wore showcase within the seasonal tournament. But yeah, the main thing, first main point I really wanted to discuss was Lee Sin. Um, players love saying that, like, Lee Sin's not good at this meta, or Lee Sin can be used on ladder, but when it comes to that tournament meta, Lee Sin always rears his big ugly head. Sorry, I do not like him. Um, every seasonal tournament, and maybe we can possibly start thinking um, something about nerfs to the champion. Um, there was even a decent bit of misplaying these Lee Sin decks, but yet these players were still doing well and advancing, as you can see by that 52% win rate. So uh, maybe we can finally start discussing nerfs for Lee Sin. It's been one of the better tournament decks for quite some time. Yes, it does go through some pretty bad um, states as far as being a ladder deck, but I think at the end of the day, the competitive scene is the tournament meta, so you do have to hold a lot of um, you have to allow that to be a huge determinant on whether a deck is worth uh, nerfing or not. Um, I personally would just love to see a Lee Sin change just to shake things up a little as it just continually shows up as a solid choice um, in for a Ionia Targon deck. And I would just love to see the players who rely on this deck so heavily be forced to kind of go out their comfort zone a little bit more, as other players who like other archetypes have to do consistently, since their favorite archetypes don't consistently um, find themselves being a good tournament option in the same way Lee Sin is. Um, the next one I wanted to go about was like, yes, you, you see a ton of Ari Cannon. Obviously, the most brought deck as far as Ari Cannon uh, Shadow Outs, and then we see a ton of it as well with the Ari Cannon Shirima. Nevertheless, though, um, players who tried to target this deck did not do well at targeting it. Obviously, you could see the win rates for both of them are sitting decently well. Um, it was just brought so much that you can't really expect the, the win rate to be any higher than that. And uh, yeah, considering that, the, the players who tried to target this deck, it did not go well. And the huge reason is going to be that in a tournament as big as a seasonal tournament, targeting a particular deck, especially one that it, that is not as, like, the Ari Kinnon is a very popular deck, but it's not as popular as previous decks that we've had. Um, even, like, Thresh Nasus, a deck that a lot of people forget how popular and polarizing that deck actually got at its peak. We love to go back and think of Azirelia, Tia Fizz, even Aphelios meta, but sometimes we really don't think, like, even Thresh Nasus was a deck that was brought a ton more than Ari Kinnon and was in so many top 32 lineups. I think it was in like 28 or something. So uh, there's been decks that were just as polarizing, if not even more polarizing than Ari Kinnon. And even targeting those decks was kind of hard, as you could tell by the deck still making it that far into the seasonal um, tournament, making it into that many top 32 lineups. So targeting just does not seem to be the way to go, um, especially in a meta like this where you can't like target numerous decks, considering that Ari Kinnon was the only huge one that you could, without facts, say, okay, that's going to be in some lineups. And yeah, saw a lot of tweets from players saying I targeted it and didn't see it at least even once. So targeting didn't work out and probably isn't a strategy that players should deploy moving forward next um we can go over to uh look at fizz lulu sitting at 55.18 percent and even if we go a little bit further and try to move over to um if we can get lulu ari 
There we go. Lulu Ari, 55.10%. Those are the two big Yordles and Arms decks. Yordles and Arms showed up big in this seasonal tournament at 55, 55%. That's an enormous, an enormous win rate for a deck that was brought this much. And yeah, just really showed the power of Yordle and Arms in this seasonal tournament. I personally don't think the deck's oppressive. I'm not a huge fan of Yordles and Arms as a card because it does just feel like a kind of power crept buffing card. Um, but considering the other nurse we got to the Bandle City kind of package. I'm kind of okay with the state it currently is in, but nevertheless, it had a big time showing within the seasonal tournament. And uh, yeah, players were... Um, players were having uh, players who brought it were definitely having a good time um, from there even scouts look at misfortune Quinn scouts sitting at 54% especially with that many people bringing it that is also extremely impressive so players who did who brought scouts also did well so Yorals in arms and scouts misfortune Quinn both had big time showings within the seasonal tournament open round so um definitely uh two decks that players who were on had a good time others who were not on them probably felt like there was probably a deck they should have considered bringing more so um just kind of cool to see these two decks that um aren't haven't really been in past meta scouts wasn't in the last meta really didn't really have any presence at all and scouts even kind of came into this meta a little later on within the meta so cool to see scouts and yordles in arms really kind of come through uh big in this seasonal tournament uh next from there let's go over some of the sleeper decks because i would say even though these had good showcasing and not everyone brought them those aren't sleeper decks we knew scouts was good we knew yordles and arms was good all the data would would uh echo that those were good decks that you could have possibly brought um, so yeah, let's go a little deeper and talk about those real sleeper decks. And those sleeper decks are going to be... Choo -choo 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 -choo. First up is actually Elise Kindred Vi. Elise Kindred Vi had a great showcase sitting over there at 59%. And this is a deck I just don't know why I did not just say as like an underrated solid option within the seasonal tournament since I did recently put up that underrated tournament decks video. Um, this should have definitely been in that video. And I kind of knew that, but for some reason still didn't put it in there. And uh, yeah, after getting initially popularized through some earlier tournaments within the Magic Misadventures meta by 4LW, a player who did make it to the top 32, of course. Um, others started bringing it as well to tournaments and also doing well with this list. Something about the three champion split, though, I feel like is off putting to a lot of players. I feel like oftentimes when I see when players present decks like this, they kind of get shunned as players think, like, oh, good decks have like more, um, like, I don't even know the exact word I want to say, but players like to have less of that variance within their champions and more like, all right, these two champions support each other. Zoe, Lee Sin support each other. Rather than having like three champions who maybe don't all, all work perfectly together, but this deck works perfectly together. Um, if you could get the early Elise, she's good at applying pressure, forcing your opponent to possibly um, just like do some trades they don't want to. Kindred does a great job of then kind of um, getting rid of threats and wiping the board, especially with the plethora of removal you have here. And this is just one of the better options against RV Cannon and a lot of the other aggro decks within the meta as well. And uh, yeah, Kindred's buff has just done so much for Kindred, and especially in a list like like this that's just running so many solid removal but also has a lot of tools for then closing out the game between uh ledros and karina versus uh verasa so um i i wish i was higher on this deck throughout the season and definitely would have gave it more of a shot but i'm glad to see that a more um unique list was able to have such a big showcase within the seasonal tournament um next up is going to be choo -choo -choo, where do we see it there we go the next up is going to be nami twisted fate and nami twisted fate a deck that i start to see so much of the exact week this week of um of the seasonal tournament was when i really start to see players reverting back to a lot of tf nami obviously nami got nerfed after the um kind of uh terrible uh, meta she put us through alongside that um previously 
um, not nerfed um, Sparklefly um, with uh, Nami Zoe. Absolutely despise that deck, but nevertheless, TF Nami is a much more fair deck and definitely requires players to um, use their brain a lot more. So a very fun deck, honestly, to watch players pilot as they quickly buff up those little elusive units and the rest of their board with Nami. And uh, yeah, this deck had a great showcase. Even players who didn't make top 32 did well with this deck. And um, yeah, it's just a deck that just quickly quickly just snowballs due to the strengths of nami as a level champion and even if you can level the tf which is not the hardest with all the draw options that this deck does have you can also uh do some great things with him as twisted fate continues to be one of the best level champions in the game so a deck not a lot of players brought but the deck had a great showcase with the players who were willing to bring it and um yeah, I strongly believe this is easily one of the most slept on decks within the uh, tournament meta. I think more players should have been on this deck and it'll be interesting to see in top 32 um, if we see an uptick from uh, this deck for sure. Because I could see I could see the Kindred um, Vi Elise pile still getting overlooked due to just the way it looks on paper. Players just being opposed to it. And not everyone's a control player, but this seems like a deck I can see a lot more of uh, players shifting over and being like, all right, let me possibly give this one a chance since it had a good showing so we'll have to see we'll have to see <laughs> okay uh from there the next one's going to be uh there should be bilgewater somewhere all right yeah 58 percent percent for bilgewater noxus and that's going to be none other than pirates so pirates also had a great showcase in the um magic misadventures open rounds uh seasonal tournament open rounds and yeah to uh, to not my surprise to other surprise possibly but not not to me i did have this deck on my underrated radar that it was an underrated deck that is good as an aggro deck and yeah players who brought it were able to do pretty well with it and i i was high on this one so it's good to see that i was was able to get one of these sleeper decks full on correct and uh yeah it, once again another deck that shall be interesting to see if more players shift over it to it as an option especially if they bring aggro triple aggro um in that top 32 shall be interesting and then the last sleeper deck i wanted to go over is going to be this one right here it's sitting at 58 percent uh, this was honestly the most surprising one that did well to me because I really didn't see this deck at any point throughout the uh, Magic Misadventures like season. Like I did not see this deck, whether it was ladder, whether it was tournament, and I'm pretty involved in the tournament scene considering I do. I'm like the team lead at Runeterra Life, and we host our own events. We have a weekly tournament as well as other tournaments that we're running. So I'm pretty involved in the tournament scene, and I did not see a soul thresh at all but nevertheless it showed up to with 26 games and was able to amass that 58 percent win rate so definitely did well in that small sample size but still enough in my opinion to say this deck was slept on going into the seasonal tournament for sure and yeah it just has a lot of options for kind of holding down the fort in the early game and also making trades that allow you to get thresh leveled and then that thresh turns gets you that asol upon attacking and a leveled asol is just still or uh, just in general, Aesol as a champion, if you could get him on the field, is still one of the best champions within the game. And uh, yeah, it seems like this was the deck to be on if you wanted to be able to play Aesol. And uh, yeah, players were able to do some good things with this deck. So I'm really, I was really excited to see that this deck did so well. Um, I'm a huge fan of honestly Aesol. Um, personally, I like Aesol a lot. Um, when I first started playing the game, I actually hated him because I felt like he was a little too good when I first, first started playing. Um, but I feel like he's in a really good place right now. And I just like seeing these more unique, lesser known decks get a chance. And yeah, two of Aesol, since you're throwing, getting him out there easier with Thresh and running all these, uh, really good uh targeting cards and yeah just pretty uh, with a bunch of the control of shadow isles so shadow isles coming up big um and we'll discuss that a little further um but yeah just really really cool um to see this deck be able to uh do some things because it's just not a deck that's really been on my radar at all even in previous seasons so um cool stuff i i, I really was surprised by this one and, and thoroughly enjoyed seeing that it was able to have a really awesome showcase and yeah just off the strengths of the invoke package uh, along the strengths of the um Shadow Isles removal, which is uh, just a lethal combination together, um, which makes sense. And then you got like Hush, so you can stop like Pantheons and stuff like that. Just a yeah, a very solid deck, and um, I'm glad it worked out for the players who brought it. 
And yeah, the last point I wanted to make here was just go a little further down on this awesome seasonal report and discuss this regional play rate, like how well did these uh, or, or how brought were these regions and you can see that Shadow Isles was brought a ton and obviously like Ari Kinnan Shadow Isles makes a lot of sense that that really is boosting this a lot but you can't overlook that there was a ton of field field the rush was bought a lot um we have that a soul thrush deck that was a little underrated we have the kindred vi elise deck that was that was another underrated option we can even go back up and see what else we're missing here um we got um diane nocturne as a shadow isles deck um let's go let's go back over here to some of the more prevalent options um, what else? Shadow Owls decks. Oh, yeah. Elise Spiders is a Shadow Owls deck. Um, um, Elise Trundle, the um, Iceborne Legacy uh, Spiders. That's a Shadow Owls deck. Um, we, we got a lot of Shadow Owls. And it was cool to see Shadow Owls be able to be in the forefront of the meta once again. Um, as it definitely wasn't just this past season, which is interesting to me because Shadow Isles, while it did get the huge vengeance buff, it just really shows how much that buff really did for Shadow Isles to kind of allow it to go back to being a really solid controlling region overall. And the buff to Kindred also really helped um, giving the region a new champion to uh, throw around in decks. There was a decent bit of Kindred Viego as well. So um, the buffs to Shadow Isles seemed to be really impactful. However, as you can see at that bottom there, um, the buffs to Freljord have not been impactful enough. Freljord did extremely bad. Like, really, really bad. You want it to be on Shadow Isles, but not alongside Freljord. Because whether it was... Uh, which is surprising to me. That obviously means that the Iceborne... Um, Iceborne Legacy Spiders wasn't brought a ton. And it's not like it did terrible, but obviously it didn't do... Um, it didn't do as good as I would have thought. Like 51.4%, I would have thought a little higher, but that's still pretty good overall. Um, but yeah, the other, sh just Freljord wasn't really a brought um, uh, region. And that's unfortunate because we got an Ash buff. We got a Anivia buff. We got a Trondo buff. We got the Iceborne Legacy buff. We got a buff to like the Poro Herder. I think that's how you say his name. We got a buff to, uh, Rhyme Tusk, uh, Shaman. Uh, there was a lot of buffs in that 3.0 patch to the Freljord region because it was the least played region the previous meta. And here we are again, looking at Freljord still being this, uh, having this little play rate in the biggest tournament of the season so obviously more needs to be brought to the Froyord region which is really sad i'm a huge fan of Froyord as a region i love Froyord. i love the champions i love the followers um but obviously it needs help it needs help so it shall be interesting if the devs take this seasonal data um and use that as a way to say hey we do need to uh get Froyord some help because yeah it's clearly screaming like help me i'm drowning help me um because yeah all those bugs and to see Froyord still have that little play rate and overall that little of a presence in the overall meta is just not a good sign. Um, especially when like decks like Lee Sin, Pantheon, Tarek, like free should be good against this deck, but it's just showing that the other tools within uh, Froyord aren't keeping up to allow like the freeze, which is unique to Froyord, to be a good enough effect to, to like throw in. And, uh, yeah, I almost even put, like, a TLC style of deck in my underrated video, and that would have been wrong. That deck did not perform well, and Freyard's play rate overall just wasn't there. So, um, those are the big things that we learned. Uh, just to cover them again, Lee Sin dropped in hard in the tournament meta, as expected. Um, didn't see a ton, like, didn't see it as a meta beater or a tournament beater at all throughout the season, but it showed up big in the seasonal tournament. Targeting, um, targeting overall, but specifically targeting Ari Kinnan did fail for players who tried to do it, so I think seasonal tournaments should not be, lineups should not be focused on targeting anymore, unless you have a very clear lineup that you're targeting, I think. It's different when you have a whole lineup, but when you're trying to target a specific specific deck i just think there's too high of a chance not only that you won't see it but also that it just may not go that well for you considering it's just one deck and not a full lineup um scouts and your rolling arms come up big in the tournament uh sleeper decks elise kindred vi tf nami asol thresh and pirates all did super well in the tournament and then lastly uh shadow isles was the most um common uh region within decks brought and Freljord was the worst. So that's going to be my things that we learned from 
the Magic Misadventures seasonal tournament video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I want to bring you guys more informative content like this. Once again, smash that like button, leave a comment, subscribe if you're new. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video for now. Peace out.